but the most important person is Bex. And I think we all just enjoyed Bex's lovely, very relaxing um, film about dried flowers. And, uh, and yeah, it was absolutely lovely. Um, now, Bex is very happy to answer questions. We've got everybody who's joined um, is muted. Um, but if you wish to ask a question, um, then you can either type that into the, into the chat um, and we'll keep an eye on the chat and ask those questions. Or you can digitally raise your hand, um, which is different on all sorts of different Zoom um, apps and, uh, and links. Um, but you'll see it from the, the kind of three dots at the bottom and you can, it says raise your hand and uh, a, little, a little blue hand will appear um, on our screen. So we know we will then unmute you and you can ask Bex um, ask Bex your question. Um, we were just saying before people joined us, but Bex, we're very jealous of your backdrop in your <laughs> studio. Yeah, it's beautiful. I do love it. Fantastically. <laughs> 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 did your interest in, in dried flowers come from? Um, where was, what, what, was there a particular, um, a particular flower that started, um, that started your interest? Um, I wouldn't say a particular flower, although um, I've had, I have lots of memories of my mum and my grandma um, having like swathes of uh, everlasting straw flowers, so the helichrysiums, um, and those are probably still my favourite just because they're so long lasting and, and their colour retains so beautifully. Um, I just think they're fantastic. Um, yeah, amazing flowers that just go on and on and on. But it was more um, the noticing of um, fresh flowers drying that kind of picked my interest. And that was um, purely by accident, actually, when uh, I was going through quite a kind of stressful time at home. And I, my friends had given me a bunch of flowers and I had forgotten about it in the vase. And over the course of like two to three weeks, it had dried beautifully. And that's really what um, kind of made me assess the way I look at flowers which has always before that been you you know you either pick or you buy them you have them fresh in your house and then you obviously dispose of them and then all of a sudden this whole other world was open, woke, opened up to me which is that actually so many things can dry um, and yeah I'm still discovering now you know the thing the best things that do dry and, and invariably pretty much most things out there have the potential so it's it's a, it's a journey I'm still on basically. And I find it very hard to pick a favorite flower at the best of times anyway. It changes basically weekly, really, depending on what <laughs> I'm working with or what I see out. <laughs> right now I have to say like oxide daisies, I just, they are so joyful. And I love the fact that they grow in places where most of us would not want to be, like the side of the road and, you know, stuff like that. They're just there doing their thing and they'll go on all summer long. Um, and they dry beautifully, so yeah. <laughs> That's good news. We've got a lot of those in our uh, ward garden at the moment, so maybe we can uh, start. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've got a question on the chat um, from Caroline Rollings, and she says, um, "Can What's you?" Around, sure. <laughs> she says, "Can you tell us about drying roses, um, and also is it possible to dry blue geraniums?" Ah, so I um, weirdly actually have just picked these from my garden. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> A coincidence but um I don't know I'm actually going to press these I probably won't dry them geraniums are really delicate and fleshy um and their petals tend to fall off really really easily and that is normally a sign um that they wouldn't hang out to dry for example because the petals will just go over so I yeah I'm going to press them and they will look beautiful um on roses I think it really depends it's a bit like tulips when you're drying those as well so I don't have a huge amount of experience with drying lots of different varieties of roses um, but it is possible and some so if you have a spray rose for example they dry really really well if you leave them in a vase basically with a tiny bit of water at the bottom and just let them kind of dry naturally and they will dry well in bud state as well as when they're open um, some of the more fleshy roses you have to really time the the point with which you pick them at because again as you probably know with roses once they start to go over the petals just fall right they just literally fall off the the flower um and i have been doing a bit of an experiment with a rose that i inherited with my garden which is i actually just laid them out to dry and that's the kind of result of them 
um, and that's maybe a week or so you can see from the back as well um, I just literally lay them on a tray to see what would happen when they dried so some of them have stayed like that but some of them the petals have fallen off and, and now I have a beautiful box of kind of rose petals um, so another option if you wanted um, depending what you want to use them for but they would dry beautifully using silica which I talk about in my book but that's basically it's it's a medium which draws out the moisture from the flower so you basically cover the flower in these silica gel beads and it pulls the moisture out but leaves everything intact and that works beautifully with roses um, but it's it's not easy to do on mass you could maybe do one or two but yeah you wouldn't be able to dry lots and lots and lots like that that's the stuff you get in handbags when you buy them isn't it yeah basically it's that you can get it on um you can get it on amazon but you can also get it on there's a couple of other suppliers that do it as well i would recommend getting if you do want to invest in it because it does dry things beautifully um you want to get the fine stuff if you buy the the balls which are quite big they leave indentations on the petals so you want to make sure that you look out for that all right great thank you and um, we've got a question from laurie who's raised her hand so i'll go to laurie and i will let her speak if i can find it out here we go um, Laura, I think you're unmuted, so if you want to ask your question. Thank you very much, and I very much enjoyed this. Now, <laughs> I, I have um, two questions. One is that you can ask, answer it later, and that is how do you have um, tricks for retaining color in flowers? But this is the thing that I wanted to show you. Have mm. you, so I lead a girls club, and my little girls make these little fairies yeah that are just made with a, a wooden bead and wire yeah that are and it's wrapped with um embroidery floss oh my god the, the hair is embroidery floss and i can give the link to the youtube on how you make these they're it's by a woman named Emily, E-M-I-L-I-E, Leffler, and, the, and her, the name of her um, site or whatever is The Untidy Artist, which mm -hmm. I think is very endearing. Anyway, I was wondering if you, I mean, my dream would be to make one of these flower fairies with live with um, fresh flowers that I dry on her. So I would see using, well, for instance, even the, the outer layer of an, a red onion would yep. make a lovely dress or some other thing. And then, so arrange it on her while it's still fresh so that say you dried it in the silica um, it would just kind of go around her or even do them as fresh arrangements that don't last. Yeah, so I think um, what you could do, I don't know, what, what's the skirt made from at the moment? Is that? It's a, it's, it's a, um, it's a silk flower that. Um, oh, that you kind of take the middle out and then put on yes. as a skirt. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what um, could work really well. I don't know obviously how, how the whole thing is attached together, but if you get, um, what I would recommend is thinking about it the other way around, which is, because my worry if you try to dry the flowers on the, um, the girl itself, so the doll itself, is that you basically need to make sure that the air can get all around everything that you're trying to dry. And I think you might clump them too much together. And in which case then, you've got a problem with mold potentially in the future. So you could try the silica thing, but it's, it's really quite fiddly. Or what you could do is, and I just, I just jumped up to get my box of many dried petals and flower heads, which are surrounding in my house. But um, this, for example, is the, the petal of a tulip. So I've hung those out to dry and most tulips are really hard to dry sometimes they stay on the stem majority of the time they don't but then you are left with all these absolutely amazing petals and those maybe stuck on with a glue gun or something like that would be stunning like look at the frills on that it would just be such a gorgeous skirt um 
And then I've also got here, which also would be lovely, is like this little peony petal, you know. So I would go down that route, which is look at flowers that have much bigger petals, dry them hanging upside down, then remove them and stick them on when they're dry. And it, it would look gorgeous. I'd love to see it when it's done. <laughs> I want you to make one because I think <laughs> you would love it. Yeah, I think so. You've got an idea in my head now. <laughs> um, and then on keeping the flowers color, um, the main things to, to do are just make sure to make sure you keep them out of direct sunlight um, and to make sure that you don't keep them in a room which is too hot, basically, because that will bleach them. But you above and beyond that, you know, it is nature and they will gradually fade. But you're talking over the course of a couple of years, um, if not more. And to be honest with you, I don't I don't particularly mind them when they do fade. I feel like it's almost like a natural aging process as um, as we age as well, right? So yeah, that would be my tip is just make sure you don't put them in the direct sunlight and nothing, you know, kind of, kind of too hot basically and they should be fine. Thanks, Max. And um, on that though, um, your book obviously is called Everlastings. It's absolutely stunning and available in our shop, I have to say it. Um, but um, obviously there isn't necessarily a foreverness about all of the dried flowers. But what, uh, one thing that I've really loved coming across in our um, library collection is that some of our books have dried flowers in them because the, the owner of the book has obviously dried a yeah. flower about it over time and they're long gone to history. But this flower is still there as that kind of that moment in time of when that person has put it in that book. Um, so would they last forever in that way? Or what's the best, what's the longest way you can, you can preserve? Well, um, I, someone that I met on Instagram that I know kind of in person as well, she, I bought a flower press from her the other day. Um, it was her mum's flower press. And before she sent it to me, she opened it up and in there were flowers from, she, she reckons maybe 30, 40 years ago because her mum around that time. So at least then. And, um, they still looked absolutely fine. I, I think the sad thing about that though is you can keep them in there if you know they're in there to have a look at, but but you really wanna be able to look at them, right? So um, with pressed flowers, one thing you can do is if you put them in a frame, you can make sure that you get, um, there's a special glass which basically reflects light. So it stops the flowers getting bleached from in the frame. Um, and that's one thing that you can obviously keep an eye out and look for and then you'd be able to keep them for a really really long time but the difference with having a display like a wreath or um, you know those dolls that we were just talking about is obviously they are out in the open in the elements even if it is only yet the elements in our house whereas if you keep them in a frame they have they're in a protective as you guys know from your library right and all the, the amazing things you have in your house you're keeping them in a safe protected environment and they invariably will last a lot longer in that way so I mean pressed flowers you're so right they are there's something about them that when you I was opening my flower press the other day and it in it were some flowers that we pr I pressed with Arlo my son when lockdown first happened and it was immediately like wow it takes you back to that day and what were we thinking at the time and obviously not knowing the situation that we were going into and there's so much um it's, it's just a beautiful way to kind of capture a moment in time I think it is a real time capsule, isn't it? I think particularly in your book, if I can find it quickly, but there's um, a really nice kind of um, flower inside a bell jar type thing, which yeah. really feels like a, a kind of capsule of a moment yeah. in time. Yeah. Um, yeah. We've got a question on the chat from Linda, who says, um, in one of the earlier sessions, they mentioned um, burning rosemary as an air freshener in the Regency era. That was an interesting talk we had yesterday. Um, she says, is there any special technique to dry it for this purpose or just hang it until dried? Um, and secondly, can lavender be used for the same purpose? Um, I don't know. And I'm nervous about giving advice on burning. <laughs> um, <laughs> highly scented products but um but i feel like i have everything that we're talking about here which is very strange i have one which is sage bound so this is um yeah again so this is basically to clear a room so it's a bundle of sage um and if you wanted to do that the best way to dry herbs is literally hang them upside down that's what they would have done in the olden days in the kitchens right to keep them for the re for the winter basically so they had herbs um lavender works really well like that but again you need to make sure with lavender that you get it at the right point in time because um, if you leave it too long, basically all of the flower, individual flower heads will either fall off or lose their purple color. So the thing about picking flowers to dry is you really have to pick them either just on the cusp of being at the best or at their best. Um, 
if you leave them too long after, then the chances are that they'll lose their colour or the petals will fall and things like that. But yeah, anything like herb related, just hang them in big bunches in your kitchen and they'll smell gorgeous. Um, and you can use them, whether you can burn them or not, I'm, I, I don't know, I haven't done it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying it later. <laughs> in a safe environment of course and do they retain their scent as much as they are when they're fresh or is it a different kind of yeah this is sage and it's absolutely gorgeous like lavender as well is amazing you probably know from you know having those lavender pillow um things that you we talk about go here when um visitors come here having been to jane austen's house in the village because um they have a you make your own lavender bag and you can yeah. lavender as it comes in which is lovely yeah exactly um i'm just checking if anyone I've got any more questions not yet so i will think of something <laughs> <laughs> so you um you sort of talked a bit about how you got into dried flat flowers and that was a really lovely story but um it's been kind of a career change for you hasn't it it's almost this whole world of, of dried flowers has created quite a yeah. love for you can you talk yeah. a bit about what's happened yeah um i think what what i would say is that dried flowers are definitely my thing but um i am really um it's just generally more about kind of nature and the ebb and flow of seasons and a lot to do with sustainability. So that's been a driving factor. So I feel like, yes, dried flowers are there, but there's so much more behind it. And I think when you look at my book, that's what I really wanted. Um, when I first put my pitch together for the publisher, um, I wanted to make sure that it was more than just a craft book, because for me, it's the whole process, growing them from seed, drying them, discovering what dries and how to dry them and all that kind of stuff. Um, so and then obviously to be able to work with something natural that lasts for so long is is really important to me. But it's it's um, it feels like it's been a very short period of time. So it's 18 months ago since I left my corporate job. But it's been there niggling at me for years and years and years, years, really if I think about it. Um, I've always been into gardening. I've always loved nature. My husband's an ecologist. He now works for WWF. I mean, uh, then I have my boys and I think you just reconnect even more with what's important. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, it, it feels quite fast, but for me, I've actually, it, it's something that I've been living with probably for like 15 years wanting to change my life. So yeah. Probably why it's fast in, in a way, because you've, you've kind of been itching to go and then you've just gone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, well, that's one of the things that we. Oops, sorry, one of the things that we can see with your um, beautiful backdrop behind you is that actually this it's a it's a very um, sustainable and uh, and kind of uh, affordable way mm -hmm. of, um, of decorating room of having plants as way of um, of drying flowers. But this is it is very um, it's very accessible and affordable way of kind of craft and hobby to get into yeah it is and that's again that's what I wanted with my book as well as I wanted to make sure it was accessible so I have I have a page of tools because that's what you have to put together when you write a craft book you have to tell people what they what they could buy if they wanted to um but but you know you don't really need anything um as long as you have some scissors and you know you, you can go and pick from your garden or you know safely um from the wild and make a nice display from it so it is really accessible it, it is entirely sustainable and particularly um when we're coming into autumn and winter it's really it's a lovely way to stay connected to the seasons just as we kind of you know pick all of our veg from the allotment and stuff like that it's why would you not do that with your flowers and then you can have flowers all year round and remember what summer's like and that it is there even on the darkest kind of rainiest winter day um yeah I think that is that's a really lovely part of it isn't it it's the seasonal change and uh, say capturing things throughout the seasons um, and yeah. obviously you've got boys at home you mentioned and you've been school homeschooling for this period <laughs> um have they do they get involved with the with the drying of the flowers and creating things with you they are um not so much with the creating i mean it, it, like i said my studio is attached to if i was to turn the camera around i mean my the, the living room is there and the kitchen's there so um they can't really get away from it but what they have absolutely without a doubt sort of got more 
awareness and love for is nature and also growing stuff from seeds. So because we've obviously had more time at home, we've been able to use our allotment more. We've been growing things with them. Um, and today was the first time that we were able to go to the allotment. If you think we've been in lockdown for what, 10, 10 weeks or something? It's the first time we could go down and they could pick the things that they'd grown from seeds. So they were eating peas from the pod and they were helping me pick flowers from my, you know, and you could really see that they were like, this is amazing, you know? Um, so they love it, yeah. Oh, really <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Max. I think we'll probably wrap up there. Um, so we've got another five minutes before our next talk, which is Kim Wilson. Um, Laurie has put a question on the chat, which is about Jane Austen and um, flowers in, in her novels. But I think, Laurie, that's possibly a, a question better directed at Kim Wilson. So if you could hold on to that for now, um, and we'll, we'll join you later for the Q&A after, after Kim's chat, which is starting at four o'clock. But thank you, thank everyone, for joining us. Uh, thank thank you. you so much, Bex. That's just been really lovely. And I, th I feel really inspired to go and uh, have a go I'm sure others do too um, and we'll see you hopefully at the house in real life soon <laughs> take care thank bye. you bye